as our ability to track people online has improved, and as the types of sources of information that we have about you when you're browsing on the internet have improved, a lot of sites have begun to try to customize or personalize their content to you. Now, this can be good. It can improve your experience of the site. So if I go to Amazon.com and Amazon knows what I'm shopping for, what I'm interested in, that can actually lead them to uh, make the site better. So it might improve my the usability of the website and make my experience as a shopper more pleasurable. Now on the other hand, it might be done as a way to try to get me to buy stuff I don't need, which is a little problematic. Um, but I think the most uh, pernicious aspect of website personalization and the thing that's most important to be aware of as an internet user is the fact that the internet is not this place that's agnostic to you. The internet is warping itself around you. Your presence on the internet is you know, manipulating the sites that you visit. And those sites are trying to conform to your expectations. Again, that can be a good thing. You know, Maybe some of us have this dream of a world that's just sort of constantly altering itself to try to conform to what we want. But on the other hand, it can also make the internet a less surprising place. It can make the internet uh, a more insulating place. Uh, maybe when we go to news sites, we only see the types of stories that they could think we're interested in based on our political beliefs. Maybe when we go to music websites, they're pushing music at us that's similar to the music that we have already heard. Maybe we'd like to hear something new. Maybe I'd like to go somewhere and hear something that's genuinely interesting. So. Personalization is, you know, like many things on the internet, complex and not something that's either good or bad. But we need to be aware of the fact that it's being done. So probably the most obvious, um, you know, uh, type of personalization that goes on online are on shopping sites like uh, Amazon.com. So, uh, you know, you can see, I don't know why this keeps popping up, um, but you can see here are, here are some recommendations for me. Um, and then there's these, now it, it can be kind of a fun game to go to a website like this and try to figure out why am I seeing these things? Uh, because uh, websites like Amazon.com get this wrong a lot. So for, for example, I have no idea why they're trying to get me to buy a quadcopter. I have no interest in quadcopters whatsoever. I wouldn't know what to do with that thing. It would pro I would probably crash it right away. Uh, so it's not the kind of thing I'm going to buy. And I don't think I've ever bought anything like that on Amazon. So I have no idea why this is coming up. Um, these books, I do buy books on Amazon from time to time. Um, these books, I don't know exactly why they're here. Um, you know, maybe Amazon's complicated algorithms have somehow used my search history or my browsing history or my buying history to figure out that these are interesting. This book, I think I do know why this is here because I think um, I ordered some books for my wife recently and maybe that was somehow generated by some of the titles that, that, they, that they used. Um, down here, on the other hand, you know, I, we have some really exciting products like, uh, for example, uh, more filters for uh, the water feeder that we use for our pets. Now, this is kind of funny because I just bought a supply of these that last like a year, so I certainly don't need any anymore. Uh, I find that to be one of the funniest aspects of online advertising is that it always seems to be trying to get me to buy things that I just bought. You know, it's like I don't need another shop bag. I already have one. I bought it last week. Um, but obviously, that's what they know about you, right? I mean, they know things that you bought recently. Uh, there's some cat toys here. Obviously, uh, Amazon.com knows something about me. Um, it knows that I have a cat. Um, so, you know, you can, and, and as you browse these sites, particularly e-commerce websites, be aware of, again, the way that, you know, this site, this web page is not something that anyone else might see. Now, Amazon is, you know, kind of open about this, right? I mean, Amazon says things to me like recommendations for you. So this is a tacit admission of the fact that this part of the page has been customized for me. But there's no reason for them to do that. They could have a whole page that they were just, you know, that was full of products and various visuals and various types of content that are uh, really designed to try to get me to buy things. Um, it's nice that they're open about it, but they don't have to be. And a lot of cases, websites aren't. The other really interesting thing about um, sites like Amazon or sites like Facebook is that you might enjoy uh, running the following experiment. So getting a couple friends together and then all go to a site like Facebook.com. What you might find frequently is that the site looks different on each one of your web browsers. And it's not because the browsers are different. It's because 
uh, Facebook is either doing one of two things. Either they're customizing the layout to your preferences because they've discovered that you know, you'll spend longer on the website if they open the chat window in the right side when you log in. Or maybe what they're doing is they're trying out new features. So they might have three or four different layouts that they're experimenting on, and they're trying to figure out which one leads people to engage with the site the most. This is something online that's sometimes known as A-B testing. I have two options. I have a big population of users. I split users into two groups. I try each option on both, and I make a decision based on how long they spend on the site or how much money they spend or how many new accounts they sign up for or whatever. Um, but you know, as you're online, be aware of the fact that you are warping the reality of cyberspace. Your presence, to the degree that sites can identify you, is causing the sites to look different and to behave different in ways that can be you know, exciting, in ways that can be useful, but also in ways that can sort of be imprisoning.